Okay, we're back live here on Think Tech Energy in America with Lou Pugliarisi at 3 p.m. on a given Wednesday. And we're going to talk about a movie today. It's the Michael Moore movie, the Riggs movie. Um, it's called Planet of the uh, Human, Planet of the Humans. And it's an environmental film, and uh, most people who have seen it hate it. Um, it is controversial to the nth degree on um, both sides, but especially the ones, the sides that I've seen, in, including a Forbes um, article, which is kind of to the right, um, uh, criticizing well, that guy is every... a big leftist. I disagree. It's not a uh, right. Well, okay, it's just He's the Forbes. green energy editor. Give me a break. Yeah, well, welcome to the show. <laughs> welcome to that's Luke Pugliarisi, in case you were wondering. <laughs> anyway, this has been very controversial, and every day a whole number of articles and videos come out criticizing it. The one I was just looking at was a fellow named Josh Fox, who's an environmentalist, who said it's all disinformation. None of it is true. Um, so, you know, and it's, it's fodder for discussion. That's what it is. That's why Lou and I are going to talk about it. Uh, we're going to see, um, you know, how much of it you could ever agree with, if anything. He's probably going to agree with some of it, and I'm going to agree with less of it. But, but Lou, you looked at it. You look at the movie as millions I of people the have. Movie. I it's only the out since was... Friday, so wow, <laughs> good for you. I thought the movie was hilarious, actually, because um, I've been working on, you know, since the mid to late 70s, I've worked on energy policy. And generally, let's say oil and gas development, traditional fossil fuel development, is subject to massive misinformation and cheap shots. And this is the first time I've seen someone do it to the environmental movement or to the environmental projects. Actually, there are plenty of things wrong with this film. I, I think we can agree. I bet that. you were surprised with that, though. I bet you were surprised because I was not Michael surprised. Moore, I know Michael Moore. I don't. But Michael Moore, him. you would expect him to be all the way over on the left, kind right, of. Right, but that's what's interesting. He about disappointed this. a lot of people that way. Well, I'm so sorry for them, but I mean, I just <laughs> think, uh, I think, uh, as I said, as I think I might have told you before we got started, a lot of people in the environmental community and the policy community called me. And I said, you know, they were whining about the movie. I said, well, welcome to the club. I mean, uh, this is the first time anyone's ever put you under a hard lens and you're all melting <laughs> like a bird flying into the Ivanpah uh, uh, solar facility in uh, the Mojave Desert. So you should just uh, get used to it. <laughs> and by the way, we're going to see a lot more of this going forward. Uh, uh, what, what do you mean? From him well, or from I somebody believe else? after we come out of the COVID-19 crisis, we're going to have a massive death. Massive. Why, why is that? Why, why does the end of the COVID crisis lead to further okay. criticism of, of environmental oh, projects? No, no. We're just not going to have a lot of money for frivolous activities. And the American people are going to have a high unemployment rate. And when people say, look, I got this great solar project for it, it's just going to raise your power rates by 20%. Well, when people don't have work and they're feared for their jobs, that stuff's going to be harder to do. And so we'll go and talk a little bit about that. Today. You know, just a footnote on that. COVID has sucked all the oxygen out of our world. Yes, um, yes. Nobody can be thinking about climate change. Nobody can be thinking about That's global my point, warming. Exactly. I wanted to talk about COVID tonight again. I have some more slides on COVID. We can do that now. It'll still be here. In two well, days. but COVID is rel re relevant here too, isn't it? Yeah. Because it, it has changed the, the, the conversation. Everybody's exactly. talking about COVID and the, and the survival of humanity, whatnot. Um, and, and there's a Malthusian theme, as according to the article in um, Forbes. In this, this, and that this is we'll have to cut the population in, in order to survive. And the same thing goes on with, uh, what do you call it, herd immunity. You have to cut the population. So all of a sudden we're in this moral dilemma either way, in COVID or, you know, in planet, well, of, I, I do planet think of the humans. That, yeah, so I think that Moore is not really going after the environmentalists. People are making a mistake. He's going after the capitalist system. He's going after this notion of like growth and prosperity and population growth. He's, he's going after more fundamental issues. He's I totally just, agree. He's using the environmental, some like egregious cases, and we'll go through some of those. And actually, these guys do need to clean up their act, and they do need to come to the table and 
But Dr. some of those there, criticisms, there, as a matter of fact, I would say nearly very much all of those criticisms are false. It's misinformation or even disinformation. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk yeah. about what you, the devil's in the details. Yeah. So let's talk about some of the details. Let's. I have some slides. Let's go right to it. Okay. You start. Okay. So the first slide is here. You see is the planet of the humans. Okay. This is the introductory slide. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so one of the big criticism Michael Moore has in the paper is biomass, right? And so when you get to the deal, and in fact, many of the criticism he has of biomass has now been adapted, adopted by large swaths of the environmental community. So trees are renewable. So what happened is people said, well, we'll grow trees, we'll cut them down, and we'll stick them in a power plant. <laughs> and of course, out of that comes like you, you do get some pollution effects and you grow more trees. So that's probably a good thing, but it's not a really, it's a renewable technology. Sure, you can regrow trees, but is it really better than a clean fuel like natural gas or a, a range of nuclear power? Well, you probably know, probably what, what, you what uh, the criticism has been is that He's way, he's way behind the environmental yeah, movement. I'm they're saying, not talking about this anymore. Well, and he quotes, and he had this kind of trick interview with this fellow McKibben. Yeah. And he got <laughs> McKibben to say that, you know, that he well, agreed with biomass and trees, when in fact, that was not McKibben's position. No, and it's actually, not his position now. I disagree. It was his position. They it was his position, but he changed his position. Well, I think that raises a different question, which is, what happens when you have a set of policies or a sense in the country that if it says renewable, let's do it. You know, all I'm suggesting is I am not, I am not a Michael Moore sponsor. I think he's made huge mistakes in this film, but he I used to, I used to be a Michael Moore well, uh, person, yeah. but I am no longer a Michael Moore person. Welcome to the club, as I say. So, <laughs> they, they, <laughs> so let's look at that. So the biomass and there's a huge facility in, in England. I forget the name of it, but I was, I was at a debate one time on it. And I just, I couldn't believe it. They're chopping down all these trees, shh, then turning them into chip, you know, little pieces of wood, chipping them, and then shipping them to England so they can get credit for burning a renewable fuel. So what happens is, so in a sense, Michael Moore on this issue is correct. And a lot of environmentalists agree with him now. What happens is the pressure, the political pressure to be politically correct, to say I have a renewable fuel, drives these guys to do things that are really not in anybody's interest. And so that is my agreement with Michael Moore. He takes all this stuff too far. And I think generally the modern world is moving away from biomass, but still, well, I think that's true, and it's true in Hawaii, and and what and the, the disinformation in the film, and it's not innocent, is that to the extent <laughs> that people were supporting biomass and trees and the like, they they aren't there anymore. Yes, they have learned true. better. But and, and so the, the film is is is, uh, is criticizing that, yeah. but it's but a it's false criticism because that it's not part believe. of the movement. <laughs> then what about the palm oil? And not only that. Ethanol. I love the fact that all these bio, I think biomass has been a huge disaster, whether it's palm oil or ethanol, but I do think it's indicative of a system which doesn't allow hard-headed analysis to talk about, to publicly debate those kinds of projects. In the era those projects emerged, you could not raise your hand and say, you know, maybe we should spend 10 minutes talking about this before we spend tons of government money. Because all these projects only exist because Uncle Sam or the states, either from a regulatory process or just like they do in Hawaii, they only occur if governments mandate them. So if governments are going to mandate this stuff, there should be some debate whether the juice is worth the squeeze. That's well, I can tell you, we've had plenty of debate about this, you know, not the basic concept of, of, of solar and wind. 
um, still actually, uh, but it's on a NIMBY basis, not on a large, large policy basis. Those things were debated as a the whole idea of climate change and renewables, years and years of debate. And, and, and the problem is, is the debate really, you know, being conducted in a way that reaches the best policy? And that you never know because this is a democracy and it's tumultuous. It's not like somebody says, um, okay, this is the way we go, that's it, no further discussion. Um, so in, in a democracy, certain, certainly Hawaii is a democracy, uh, we have had plenty of discussion about it. And I would say here, um, it's still going on, uh, here we have reached pretty good policy. The problem is not so much the policy, uh, and uh, we should talk about this, it's the implementation of the policy. Well, okay, you can't really divide the two. Sometimes, uh, yeah, there's a lot, a lot of problems with implementation when the government's doing the project because government bureaucrats do not get punished when they, if you think about the bureaucracy, right? I can tell you, I was in five federal agencies. There are two motivating factors. One is, I'm not really interested in doing anything good. I just don't want anything bad to happen, okay? Because I, like never get rewarded. <laughs> I never get rewarded for taking a risk and maybe doing something spectacular for the country, but I will get punished if I do something bad. Okay. So you have to realize there is a risk taking is not in, it's not part of the DNA of the bureaucracy. So that's always going to give you problems with these projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the second part is, and my, my pitch is, not, I'm not defending Michael Moore. I think he's a lunatic, actually. But <laughs> I do think it's hilarious because he has picked some really great stories. Let's go to the next one, the next slide. Uh, okay, this is one of my favorites. I this would have is, picked that one too. This is the, well, this was in his movie. I thought we should talk about it. Yeah. He so this is the Ivan Paz Solar Facility. This yeah. facility, <laughs> this, uh, this facility was actually uh, like a, a, a sort of stationary source power generator, right? You would get the mirrors, they would heat up. You would shoot them to this facility, which would raise the boiler and raise, you know, give you, generate power. But of course, it took sometimes as much as four hours of uh, natural gas in the morning to get it up and running. The other great thing about this facility is it, uh, it's like any birds that flew over it were just got uh, incinerated. So all the stuff the environmentalists are worried about and that when they build the facility, and actually this came out in the movie, one of the problems with lots of renewable fuel is the, the energy source itself is not very dense. It's very, it's very undense, if there's such a word. It has very low density. So you need a huge amount of land commitment. And so if you watch the movie, they are, I think they used about 3,500 acres for that project. It came in close to two and a half billion. DOD put 1.2 billion up in a uh, loan guarantee. And it's complete disaster. It's just a complete disaster. Uh, it does, could, it does, that technology is, is over by, what, that, 10 or 15 years, maybe more? That's fine. That's fine. But the point is... It was, is that, it was a bust. That technology didn't work. The point, but, but that's and we the had point. it here, you know. We had yeah. it in Hawaii. We had a, a substantial facility out in uh, Kona. So you know what? How much... Here's, uh, here's a question for you. How much work could we have done with that $2 billion on infectious diseases? Money has oh, alternative right. uses. And if the oh, government right. is going to piss away money, yeah. it ought to at least go through a process of review. And these projects were so popular. They continue to be so popular. Whether it's wind, it's that. I'm not there, here to defend the government, but I will say right, that there when is you have um, an, a, 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 uh, an initiative where you don't know exactly what the technology is going to do for you, you have to try things out. You have to take risks. And the bureaucrats, as you say, you know, they sometimes get the, ri the risk mixed up. But the you know, bottom line is it, nobody knows for sure whether a given technology or project is actually going to work. And sometimes, more before than now, but sometimes these projects go bust, totally yes, bust. Another been. piece in the, in the film was a, a wind farm. Do you remember that? Yeah, and, yeah, we'll get to that. That's actually... 
uh, let's go to the next slide for a second. Next slide, please. Because I'm not really defending. Okay, so this is. And I'm not defending the bureaucracy myself. Now, um, <laughs> is you've got the. Actually, do you have the slide of the? Okay, well we can do this one now. There should be one. So I can't really read it. Uh, let me just see if I can pull this up a little bit bigger. On my, yeah, okay. So, so this, we have spent uh, billions and billions of dollars around the world on quote, renewable power, right? And so what happens when you see the data from the government? They say, yes, but look, we have 26% renewable electricity. Well, Yes and no. Well over half of that is a technology and a power system that's already in place. It's called hydropower. We are not building a lot of new hydropower anymore, right? This is legacy technology. So let's go back and look at the other... Well, third world countries. countries, we're building a ton of it. Yes, um, sometimes true. ill-advised. The Mekong River is an example. Yeah, the yeah, Nile that, is another example. Right, but These those are huge mostly, projects. Those were mostly in the past. Mostly in the past. In happening the right now. Years. Happening right now. Um, there have been a lot of uh, uh, articles about the Mekong, and it's contentious. There's a lot of controversy about it. And the same thing with the Nile. There are threats of war over putting dams but on I'm the Nile. I'm pretty sure those projects are completed. At least the Mekong project is completed. But anyway, let's take a look at this. We have spent billions of dollars, right? And this is where we are. We have barely made an a dent in renewable power. And why is that? Why doesn't renewable power uh, kind of dominate the, uh, the, the development of energy? And it's because it's expensive and it doesn't have the density. It doesn't have the density that fossil fuels produce or nuclear power produces, right? And until we solve that problem, we need to have an open debate about how much environmental damage we are willing to accept when we go through for these renewable projects. And I'll get to, I have some conclusions about this on the end. Let of me, but let me add a footnote to that. Michael Moore goes into that in the movie on a number of occasions. And he says the uh, carbon footprint for making a solar cell, making a windmill very high. Um, and you know, uh, the environmentalists completely disagree with that. So I uh, his, think his analysis, his numbers, uh, his, his, his look in terms of the time dynamic is wrong. He's talking about efficiency levels that are 10 or 15 years old, yeah, but when he's criticizing solar today where the efficiency levels are much better. No, I, I thought that was, he, he, he was off there, but I have seen life cycle analysis on electric vehicles and windmills, which substantially reduce their net carbon reduction. But that's not really my complaint. My complaint is, is that when you proceed with a project, any kind of project, you should not have a unidimensional criteria for the environment. In other words, what happens in our society is people have decided that, oh, if it has a climate benefit, it must be priceless. It must be priceless. And we don't really care about uh, the other consequences, uh, mining in the Congo or or uh, the environmental damage from iron ore. So I'm just saying that when we proceed with these projects, we can't have a, uni a unidimensional view of what the externalities are. There are lots of externalities. They should be discussed, they should be presented, and they should be debated. And people well, should decide. But you know, the problem there is that if you look at context, the context is the earth only has so many years before climate change wrecks the place. And, well, I, and I, that's clear as a scientific fact. Now you can argue with me about the number of years, um, but uh, like Joshua Fox in his little piece um, on, this, on this film said it, 10 years and we were in deep kimchi. Um, but, but it's gonna be at some point and you can, you know, you can you deny know you the timeline, but you can't deny that it's happening. Look at all the changes in is... our environment all over the world. It's happening all the time. And, okay, and so Trump, for example, denies it. It's incredible. 
So what um, we so that's the reason people are so excited about renewables. So what we should do is we should look at all the apocalyptic forecasts of the last 30 years and ask ourselves how many of those have actually come to pass. Because what is this is about this is a more fundamental issue. And the fundamental issue is that lots of people on the, I don't want to say the left, but let's say people with progressive instincts, they're also pessimists. Their outlook for ha you know, humankind is very pessimistic. And you can see it in how they think about the future. They have no, no capacity to think about how man can adapt, how we can adjust, and how we can uh, deal with these crises as they come up. Yes, we should plan for the future. But in fact, there is a consequence to planning your whole life against a worst case scenario. And uh, let, let's go to the next slide for a second, because I'm going to, I do get to some conclusions eventually. Okay. Now, this is the one I loved when I saw Michael Moore's movie, because we have all these, uh, you know, people who make like a half of, uh, you know, make 500,000 or a million bucks a year in California driving their Teslas. And they are so proud that they are saving the environment, right? But no one ever asks, how do we get the cobalt and then make the lithium out of the cobalt? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> we don't have to worry because there's plenty of cobalt in the Congo. <laughs> well, you know, that, that is actually one of the photos that was uh, referred to in the, um, uh, in the, in the, uh, the magazine, the Forbes magazine article. <laughs> and uh, it's, what's unfair about it is that you have this picture of these poor people doing digging whatever they're doing in Africa um, and the implication that's what the criticism in, in the Forest magazine <laughs> article, it's all these implications of horrible horrible terrible things going on and and it's not really connected it's not logical and there is it's not evidence-based it's just intended to get you excited I intended to use that actually, same ch child labor is a problem child labor is a problem but but that's not the issue about cobalt. <laughs> well, you know, give us child labor, but don't give us child labor for the this, this suggestion that they're that, that they we're wasting children in order to do cobalt, so the guys in California can drive their Teslas. It's well, let too, me ask you, too long a chain you think of the biggest, What do you think the biggest killer of birds is in the in the in the U.S.? Probably the guys with the shotguns in the South. No, it's cats. But no one has suggested getting rid of cats, okay? It's cats. Windmills are up there. Windmills are up there. They're like number three after electric power lines. <laughs> now, I think I have, I have one or two more slides. Let me see what we've got. I think we have the last slide here. Let me see if we can get that. Up. Oh, yeah. So I think, you know, what's the correct way to think about renewables? Let's put Michael Moore aside. I mean, his movie's a hoot. And I must say, I was just, I never had so much fun as when I was watching it because. <laughs> Were you I've dismayed? Never, Were you dismayed? No. I wasn't dismayed because I know who he is. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I was dismayed because I, mean, I, I, I thought he was somebody different. And he comes along with this, you know, actually nefarious kind of position on this. And, and he tears up the environmental movement at a time when we can hardly afford to have the environmental movement torn up. So I'm thinking, why did he do that? Now, what he says is, I, I did it to create controversy. I did it so all you guys can talk about it. I did it so we, we can refresh the conversation at a time when everything is, uh, is all about uh, COVID. And, and maybe there's some truth in that, but it's still, maybe. as a matter of propaganda, as a matter of disinformation, this movie isn't doing anybody any service. No, uh, I, I would agree. I mean, look, there's plenty of things wrong with that movie. I'm not defending Michael Moore, God forbid. Look, he's upset that all these capitalists put money into renewables. He should be happy about that. But <laughs> then he really ascribes upset. this conspiratorial thing among them, which but we thought, know, you and me know, that's not true. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. 
that, that the Sierra Club has this like solar facility uh, onto where they work with to make money and they got money to try to get rid of coal. Right. And they made all these deals with the gas. Guys. Right. That's, that's that's right. Nefarious, uh, uh, nefarious intentions by the Sierra Club. <laughs> I, I want to get to my last, my last slide, my last point here, how we should, how we should, how an analyst or someone who's kind of uh, sober in their thinking. So let's see that last slide here and get it up. Uh, yeah, so, okay. So what's the correct, first on the left side, I want you to see here what the different, and what things cost is, are important. I just need you, you people in the environmental community to start thinking about what things cost. We can't do things just because they sound good or they feel good. We need to find things that are cost effective, right? And I think what's interesting, about the, these are the 9, 2017 dollars per ton for different kinds of technologies and things. And what, what I noticed when I've been involved in all this stuff is that there's little attention to it. If you go to some state official, the government says, I want to do this, and it'll reduce carbon. No one ever says, well, does it cost a lot? No one even asks that question anymore. Oh, that sounds great. Let's do it. And so that gives us this wacky system where we're spending gazillions of dollars for one kind of thing and uh, very low for something else. We forgot what we're here for. We're here, you know, so, so I, I do think that's a real issue. Now, Michael Moore's not talking about that. So, uh, so one of the things, so a couple of items that, you know, I, I think need to go forward on this thing that I take, that I would take out of the Moore film is one, okay, let's put these projects under some hard-headed analysis. Let's not just say, if it's a renewable, it must be wonderful. We got to stop that, right? We have to think about the old, we, have, we can't have a unidimensional view of the world. We can't say we're going to do a project because it's good for climate. Oh, it's bad for water or, you know, it kills all the birds. That's okay because we know that reducing carbon is priceless and all these other en environmental values are worthless. We can't have that kind of strategy anymore. We have to have something that's balanced, that looks at the whole realm of environmental consequences. And we have a project that's taking up 5,000 acres, chopping up gazillions of Joshua trees. Well, we ought to ask ourselves, is it worth it? That's really all I'm saying about this. I'm not really defending more. I think what more did is provoked a lot of people. I agree with you. And then finally, and this is a theme I've been trying, I've noticed if you read the literature and a lot of the environmental community, they are equating COVID-19 to climate, like they see it as the same thing. We now have 30 million people. I think we're gonna have 30 million people out of work in the US. We have environmental groups that say, can't you see how nice the air is? This is the world we should live in. Let me tell you, it is not politically stable. It is not politically prospective in any, in any way for the United States to have 30 million people out of work for the state of Hawaii to never allow tourists to come back. All these things people are talking about that some of the government can just dole out money and we're all gonna be fine. The government doesn't have any money. They're borrowing this money and their ability to this borrow this money is gonna come to an end very fast. Because if we don't have a, 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 an active, viable, growing economy, we're not going to be able to borrow money. And I think, yeah, you can, you, you can say, oh, well, we, you know, we, we need to stay locked down and we'll get all the environmental benefits. It'll just be like the Green New Deal. I don't think so. I think people are going to be quite uh, No question about it. We're in a new time here. Yeah. And uh, the health, public health is different. And of course, uh, so are the economics. But the one thing that's constant is climate change. Anyway, next time, Lou, um, Lou, Lou Polirici and I are going to tell you how we really feel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so looking forward to our next discussion because I know there'll be all kinds of news between now and then uh, and, and we can trip off that. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, Jay. Have these conversations. Aloha. Stay well. Aloha.